the age old question, the argument on every single car Facebook group or forum, the thing that divides friends groups, friends groups, or friend groups, air suspension versus coilovers. Many moons ago, back in 2018, Alex, with his weird comb over and different colored hair, covered this question already, but I wanted to do an update on it and talk a little bit about my experiences with it too. I've had the pleasure of dabbling with many different coilover setups and running air suspension on multiple vehicles, so the main problem here is I can't tell you exactly what you want that's up to you, but I'll do you a solid and give you enough knowledge that you can confidently make the decision without just blasting rude comments on post saying your cousin's brother's girlfriend's husband had a bag and it popped, so air suspension is trash. Of course, if you need anything suspension related, you already know to head on over to fitmentindustries.com and we made it real easy for you by putting the links directly to coilovers and air suspension in the description. Let's get into it. So coilovers, let's get into the basics. A lot of people pick up a set to lower the car to achieve better fitment, to transform the look of their car, you know, get rid of that monster truck wheel gap, but coilovers are designed to do so much more than just that. A lot of times air suspension gets flack for how expensive it is, not realizing how many sets of coilovers are out there that are actually more expensive than a set of 3P air suspension from Airlift. But this is for good reason. There is a lot more that goes down than just your car. With coilovers, you get the ability to adjust spring rates, compression, rebound, damping, and more to literally dial your car in to do exactly what you need it to. This isn't just for hard parking at shows, this is for launching your car at the drag strip, it's for being able to take that corner at autocross just a little bit faster. It's about taking your drift car and being able to do a reverse entry at 120 miles per hour. Okay, take it easy, bud. What I'm getting at is the world of coilovers is so damn big. If you look at BC Racing, you're going to see everything from their BR line of coilovers that starts around 1100 bucks to five other lineups going all the way to the ZR, which starts at around 2800. Now each part of the lineup is going to serve a specific purpose and give you more adjustability as you move up the ladder. This is going to be for most big suspension brands like Fortunato, KW, ST, etc. The biggest benefit of coilovers is having all of these options and it being reliable for us. You install the coilovers and it's generally pretty simple. Anyone and their buddies can do it in a day. Okay, well not anyone. I've seen some of you and your buddies and you all need to stay away from power tools and stop making TikToks shooting off the top hats on your stock struts because I have a panic attack every single time I see that <laughs> But what I'm trying to get at here is once they're in the car and your alignment's done, you're good to go. That's it. Coilovers aren't going to pop. If you have a fuse go out, it's not going to be the end of the world and you don't have to think about your lines freezing and it's just overall less maintenance than a typical air suspension setup. And for everyone that is just looking to dump their car on the ground, you can get into a set of coilovers cheaper than getting into air suspension. Also, there's this huge controversy of how static cars are better because it's harder to achieve tight fitment at your ride height and drive it how you park it, even though every super low car on coilovers that I see disassembles their car and puts their bumper in the back seat to drive anywhere farther than an hour away, but to each their own. If you're looking at getting your first set of coilovers or even upgrading to some solid ones, I'll give you a couple of my personal recommendations. Fortunato 500s are great coilovers that are slightly more expensive, starting around 1500 bucks, but have been my personal favorite and I've ran on three different cars over the years. They have a huge range of adjustability to lower your car, adjustable camber plates on top, and adjustable damping. The ride quality is felt amazing even with my car like an inch off the ground. Each of these coilovers are hand built and are completely rebuildable so you can use them for years and years. Another great coilover that I talked about earlier is the BCBR series coilover. This is BC's entry level coilover but it's going to be perfect for anyone that daily drives their car or does some spirited driving on the weekends. These are also going to have camber plates, adjustable damping, which is great. And on both of these coilovers, you're also going to get the option to upgrade the Swift Springs for an extra $300. But hear me out, every single person I've talked to that has done the Swift Spring upgrade swears by it. If you don't know what Swift Springs are, they were founded in Tokyo back in 1997, which is the same year Mike Tyson bit that dude's ear off. Anyway, Swift Springs are made of a super strong alloy that allows them to use a thinner diameter of wire. There is two benefits to that. The spring itself is way lighter and it also makes a bigger gap between the coils, 
which allows for a bigger stroke in the spring, which means it doesn't bottom out as fast as coils that use that thicker diameter wire spring. Also by using this alloy, it makes the springs last way longer in general. After a year of racing on these springs, they reported that they are typically within a half to 1% of the rate they were when they came out of the box. So that's a quick crash course on coilovers, but we still need to talk a little bit about air suspension. Back in the day, I was that static dude. Bags are for groceries and I will never go air until I went air. I ran it in two of my cars and I was sold. This is so damn convenient. Speed bump, just air up. Driveway that for some reason has a 85 degree angle, air up. Filling up with gas, air out. You air out everywhere, no matter what, it doesn't matter, okay? So it's gonna be five seconds you get out of the car, you air out, you air out for the peasants. That's what you do with air. Now there is a lot of misconceptions about air suspension and we have made some videos covering that so you can go check those out for more detail but I'll still touch on a few here. Air install really isn't that bad. Again, a few buddies in a garage is all it takes. If you've installed coilovers and you've installed an aftermarket radio, you can 100% install air suspension. Even if you haven't, I believe that you can do it. Airlift and AccuWare both include color install books with lots of pictures. I'm a big picture guy. Words are overrated. But seriously, the install guides are extremely helpful and in this day and age, you have the internet in your pocket and any issue you're running into has probably been ran into by 50 other people and you can find an answer. Now, just because install isn't that bad doesn't mean you should whip through it. Install is everything for air suspension. It's going to be the reason why you either love it or absolutely hate it in the long run. Make sure your lines are ran correctly, no pinches, not rubbing on anything. Make sure you use lots of plumber's tape with your fittings and double check by spraying all of them with soapy water to see if you have any leaks. Anyways, moving forward, air can be ran in winter. I'm not sure who made this rumor or why the half the car scene thinks this, but with a little bit of maintenance, which includes putting air brake antifreeze in your tank and airing out a couple times to cycle it, and having a water trap in your system, you will be perfectly fine. Semi trucks run air suspension, ambulances run air suspension. I promise you won't have an issue if you do everything right the first time. Last thing I want to touch on for miss is that you can't drive hard on air. I beat the absolute piss out of my ST while it was on air and drove no differently than when I had coilovers on it. There's still plenty of adjustability with air and it's even right at your fingertips. Putting a few more PSI in your bags is going to stiffen them up and also raise your car. Once there, beat the, beat the hell out of it, you're good. Airlift Company has been around since 1949 and knows exactly how to make a durable bag for your car. It can handle what you give it. Now to touch on a few of the cons, price in my personal opinion, I wouldn't go in piece by piece buy air suspension and it just makes way more sense to buy a kit that will come with everything you need and that's gonna start right around 3,200 bucks. This is a lot of cash. Now there is options that we offer like as low as 0% financing on Fitment Industries so you can make payments instead of just dropping that much on the spot. So that works around it a little bit, but I totally get that's not everyone's thing either. Another con is the chance of being stranded. If you miss something on the install or realize you're running the wrong size wheel and it's rubbing on the bag and a bag pops or a line ruptures, you're stuck on the side of the road. That's why I can't stress enough how important the install is. That's basically it. Air ride's really nice when you have it dialed in correctly. It can be driven hard and you don't need to destroy your car while driving it. Some brands to look at here are Airlift Performance, AccuAir, and Universal Air. Airlift is definitely the most common, but they don't make kits for every single car. So what's nice is if you have a unique vehicle, is you can, for example, run AccuAir Management and Airlift Struts, or you could run Airlift Management and Universal Struts. They can be interchangeable to get what you need. To sum it up, there's nothing quite like a car that's completely aired out, fender to lip, and just achieve that perfect look. Also, if you're going to do this, please make sure that your car looks good aired up, not just aired out. Now to combine all of this, I'll touch on one more thing because I get questioned on it all the time. Fortune Auto does actually make air cups. These combine coilovers with air suspension. It's just a little unique. Now these aren't made to be driven aired up. They're made so you can air up to get in a driveway or get in a trailer and then air back out and you're riding on coilovers. You still run lines and have a tank, but if something were to happen, you're still technically on coilovers and that's how you drive anyways. So it gives you that reliable factor. These are going to be about the same price as an air suspension kit, so you're not really gonna save any money by doing this, but it's a cool feature. If you want to learn more, I got to talk to Terry from Fortune Auto about these at SEMA, and you can check that out. Whew. 
All right, so what are you picking? Did you decide? Comment below, but say why. I'm gonna read every single comment because that gets me all riled up. I ran both and I love both for its own reasons, but don't forget, if you need anything we talk about, you can hit the links in the description because over here at Fitman Industries, we specialize in wheels, tires, and of course, suspension. See you later.